Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Congressman Randy Forbes grills Air Force leaders, demanding religious freedom for Academy cadets. The Coast Guard Admiral admits he was threatened by President Obama to endorse a homosexual military. And courts confirm an exception for ministers when it comes to religious hiring. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Last month, we reported cadets at the Air Force Academy are under fire because they exercise their First Amendment rights to post Bible verses on their personal whiteboards in the hallway outside of the rooms. Here are some examples of those whiteboard posting with scriptures with positive uplifting Bible verses, proclaiming their faith in Jesus Christ and encouraging others. But certain anti-Christian complainers demanded the scriptures be erased. And so the superintendent of the Air Force Academy admitted that senior officers met with and pressured at least one cadet to remove the Bible verses and he complied and erased them. If he had not, he would have been punished said at least one Air Force lawyer who apparently has never read the First Amendment of the Constitution and also wants to violate DOD regulations and federal law passed by Congress last year. This has now drawn attention of the United States Congress. Congressman Randy Forbes, we're gonna show you, has grilled Air Force leaders last week in hearings on Capitol Hill. Here is that video of the leader of the Congressional Prayer Caucus. Madam Secretary, you're shaking your head. Let me tell you, an in, uh, a an item though that's of major concern to me. Recently we read this week where a cadet at the Air Force was forced to take a Bible verse off of a private whiteboard um, in his room. The facts that I've received from the Air Force, so these aren't uh, hypotheticals, is that this cadet had no intention to offend anyone or any group. Number two, that the private whiteboards have long been used to display items reflecting their personality and from which they draw personal inspiration. Number three, they've long been used for citing inspirational quotes. And fourth, this is perhaps the most offensive. The Air Force said this was a teaching moment that the cadet's action in putting the Bible verse on was inappropriate based upon leadership principles. General and Madam Secretary, that cadet his family, the other cadets who are now putting up Bible verses and verses from the Koran can't stand in front of you today, but I can. And here's the question I have for you. Can you tell me any other inspirational quotes that cadets have been forced to remove from their personal whiteboards other than verses from the Bible, one? And second, I want to point out this to you. General, when you come in my office, I chair the Sea Power Subcommittee. Over the door you walk through, I have our national motto, In God We Trust. Mr. McIntyre, the ranking member of this committee, has that same motto over his uh, door. Mr. Miller, who chairs the VA committee, has In God We Trust up in his office. Mr. Conaway, who chairs the Ethics Committee, has it up in his office. Mr. Whitman, who chairs the Readiness Subcommittee, has it up in his office. Dr. Fleming has it up in his office. Chairman of the Government Reform Committee is putting it up in his office. Chairman of the Ways and Commit Means Committee in his office. Speaker of the House in his office. And here's the question I ask for both of you two today. Give us that teaching moment of one, how that's any different than this cadet putting his own personal verse on his own personal whiteboard. And number two, how is that offensive to leadership principles? So perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll start if it's all right, Mr. Forbes sure. and Chief, you, you, you jump in. I, I read this uh, in the press as well, and I uh, did have a chance to talk to General Johnson yesterday to say, kind of what, what's going on with this. So, so I wanna share with you what she shared with me in terms of how this incident actually unfolded. So I'll get to that in just a second. But first, if I may, I just wanna read the policy of, of our Air Force. 
about the religious freedom. Leaders at all levels must balance constitutional protections for an individual's free exercise of religion and other personal beliefs and its prohibition against governmental establishment of religion. For example, they must avoid the actual or apparent use of their position. Madam Secretary, I don't want to cut you up, but I only have a minute and okay. 15 seconds. Can you answer the question for me, what other quotes have been have end of cadets been forced to pull off of their whiteboards that were not Bible verses? So I don't know, but the real point I wanted to just, if I may, um, apparently a cadet went to this other cadet who and and said this makes me uncomfortable and that cadet voluntarily took it down. Now that's not, not true. Ordered. By your own facts, Madam Secretary, if you read what your liaison officer has given to me, the entire Air Force chain of command in that particular situation, that's what he says. If maybe he it was inaccurate, and the Air Force commander is what what I'm given by facts from your office went to that cadet, and then they say when all of them come to him, he voluntarily did it. Can you imagine a young cadet when he's forced with the entire chain of command coming in there and telling him basically this is inappropriate? That's what, your, that's what your folks are citing to me, that it was inappropriate based on leadership principles. And at some point in time, Madam Secretary and General, I'm just telling you, we need to stand up for these cadets' rights too. Freedom of religion and their exercise of that, whether they're putting it from the Koran or the Bible, is not to make sure no person on the planet is offended. It's to say that cadet ought to have the right in their own personal board to put that verse up there. And help me with this. Why, if he is wrong, aren't all of us wrong in putting in God we trust up in our office? So um, my facts come from General Johnson, so I apologize. I have not seen the paper that, that you're looking at. Uh, what I just explained is the way that General uh, My Johnson time's out, but I hope you guys will come back to us on this. And for once, the Air Force starts standing up for these cadets and their rights instead of just constantly saying, if anybody at all opposes it, we're going to make them take these things down. And, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Mr. Chairman, may I, may I very briefly answer the yes. question? I've been a commander of a cadet squad at the Air Force Academy. I've been the commandant of the academy. We remove hundreds of quotes from those boards because they're not in their room, Congressman. They're in the hallway. They're used for both personal and professional messaging, just to make sure we all understand that context. Um, what you said is absolutely true. Every cadet has a right to free religious expression. But if someone else comes to them and says, that bothers me, and they have that discussion, if that's what happened, I would compliment both of them. We got to get the facts straight. General Johnson has been doing that, sir, and I'll come make sure. And General, my time is up, but I want to just respond since you had extra time. First of all, it's different if they just have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. That's not what happened. It says the chain of command came to this cadet, and again, I'm just going by what your office has given me facts on. If the facts are wrong, I can't answer that. The second thing is, you can't have it both ways. You can't say we forced other people to take these quotes off but yet this was voluntarily done. And I think if you ask this cadet and the other cadets, they don't believe it was voluntarily done. But with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Okay, now, full disclosure, I'm a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy and I support Congressman Randy Forbes. He's a Christian congressman. And yet he's advocating very simply for defense of the First Amendment freedoms. Now you see, the SECAF James and the Chief of Staff Welsh are now domestic enemies of the Constitution. That four-star general was literally arguing to Congress, oh, well, it would have been okay if the Bible verses were inside the cadet rooms, but once you bring them outside the cadet rooms, then you're guilty of what? Guilty of free speech? This is a domestic enemy of the Constitution who's in charge of our Air Force and his sidekick, the SECAF. Shame on them and shame on you if you're watching this. And by the way, you denied something that I'm gonna prove right now, or it seemed that way. The Congressman was grilling you about this quote from the Superintendent, Michelle Johnson, three-star general in charge of the Air Force Academy said this, with the mentorship of the activity, the, excuse me, the active duty commanding officer, in other words, the AOC, as part of the discussion, came and lectured the cadet. The cadet squadron commander also raised the per potential perception, and finally, the cadet voluntarily elected to erase the scripture. After being lectured by his entire chain of command, they are pressuring junior cadets to censor their religious faith. That's a violation of their First Amendment rights. It violates DOD instruction, 1300.17. It violates the federal law passed by Congress this year, which says that 
All members of the military should have freedom of religious expression. The lawyers are behind this. I'm asking you to take action. If you care about religious freedom for our troops, call the superintendent right now. 719-333-7731. Or write down this phone number and call during business hours, 7.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday, Mountain Time at the Air Force Academy. Call the Air Force Academy superintendent, Michelle Johnson at 719-333-7731 and say these words. Jesus and the Bible are not illegal speech for cadets. Stop cowering to the anti-Jesus complainer, Mikey Weinstein. People, please take action. If you don't know what else to do, sign a petition today. We have this on our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org. Let's strengthen the law, protect the free speech rights of all members of our military who sacrifice and die on foreign battlefields to defend free freedom of speech for others, but they're not given that same freedom of religious expression themselves, this is a foul. And people, we need to defend the Constitution. The Bible says this, and it reminds me of the persecution endured by Peter and John in Acts chapter four. They called them in and commanded them not to teach at all or speak in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said, whether it's right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you more than to God, you judge. They disobeyed men, they obeyed God, kept on preaching in Jesus' name, and they were flogged. But they rejoiced in Christ's suffering. We're gonna take a short break and when we come back, another report, a top admiral in the Coast Guard is threatened by President Obama personally if he doesn't homosexualize the military. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we will fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress, and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. Sorry I got so passionate in that last segment. This is personal to me, people. I care about religious freedom, especially for our cadets. Our next story comes from JoeMiller.us, who reports that uh, there's a video now revealing that President Obama personally told the nation's top military commanders, got them all in a room and threatened them to support his agenda of a gay military or find another job. This stunning revelation comes in a video that was obtained by Buzzfeed under a Freedom of Information Act request. They were trying to keep it secret, but the law required to be exposed and now it's been posted online. The chief of the nation's Coast Guard, Admiral Robert Papp, says in the video, we were called into the Oval Office and President Obama looked at all five service chiefs in the eye and he said, this is what I want you to do. Papp continued, I cannot divulge everything he said to us. That's private communication within the Oval Office. But if we didn't agree with it, if any of us didn't agree with it, we all had the opportunity to resign our commissions or go do other things. 
The issue at that time was President Obama's abandonment of the don't ask, don't tell policy that allowed homosexuals to serve in the military as long as they kept their sexual proclivities to themselves. But now, sadly, the military promotes open homosexuality in the ranks. Here now, a video, Coast Guard Admiral Robert, Robert Papp admitting that he was threatened by the President of the United States. Uh, one of the early things that I was faced with as Commandant is the repeal of don't ask, don't tell. And uh, I think we made the right decision. But we were called into the Oval Office and President Obama looked all five service chiefs in the eye and said, this is what I wanna do. And I'm not going to, I cannot divulge everything he said to us. That's private communications within the Oval Office. But if we didn't agree with it, and if any of us did not agree with it, we all had the opportunity to resign our commissions and go do other things. And uh, so that was a pretty big thing at the time. It was something that was uh, huge compared to my existence for, at that point, probably about 35 years in the service. And uh, we were called up to the Hill to testify on it. So uh, you're all gonna be confronted with things large and small. I would suggest you to work hard working on the small things because then it prepares you for those big things that will come later in your career. Does that answer it for you? Thank you, Admiral. My pleasure, thank you. There it was, you heard it in his own words. The top Coast Guard Admiral saying, President Obama threatened me that if it did, I didn't want to homosexualize the military, I could resign and end my 35 year career. That's how the president, the commander in chief supposedly of the United States military threatened not just the Coast Guard, but all of the service chiefs, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. And God bless them for their difficult stand, their career service. You know, if it was me, I would have resigned. I would not serve a commander in chief like that if he was gonna threaten me with my career for doing the right thing, for protecting our troops. No wonder they all paraded before Congress and testified, no problem, we have no problem with this. They were being blackmailed with their jobs by the commander in chief. Shame on them for compromising and submitting to his tyranny. You know, one of these days, the military ought to just rise up and, well, who knows what they ought to do. But this does remind me of what Jesus said. This persecution, which came directly from the top down, reminds me of what Jesus said in Matthew 5. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you, great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. And that's happening in the purge in the military right now, Christian believers are being persecuted. Let's pray, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, I do pray in Jesus' name for every member of our military, especially the Christians who are now being threatened by President Obama for their faith, for their belief in traditional marriage between one man and one woman, like Tech Sergeant Lane Wilson, Senior Mass Sergeant Philip Monk, countless 65 Navy chaplains suing the military, fired for Jesus Christ. God, end the scourge. And Father, give us a new commander in chief who respects religious freedom for the troops. I pray this blessing on America. God, help us redeem our troops and give them the same liberties they sacrifice to give to others. I pray this blessing upon them in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> and amen, okay, let's take a short break. We have one more story. A court case determines that there is a ministerial exception for hiring and firing practices. It's good news. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we will fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support HR 343, this is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that, but did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. 
Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Welcome back and thank you for watching PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps. Let's end the day with a positive story, a little bit of controversy, but I think it's a good outcome for religious freedom. Breaking Christian News reports that a courtroom victory is declared for Christian organizations who have a legal right to hire people who agree with the Bible and fire people who disagree with the Bible. And that's not discrimination, it's in fact permitted by the First Amendment. According to the American Center for Law and Justice, our friend Jay Sekulo, this is yet another victory for religious liberty. The case was Conlon versus InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. And in this lawsuit, a former employee sued her Christian employer, which is a national campus ministry, InterVarsity, and the woman claimed that religious criteria for employment constituted discrimination in violation of federal law, which requires you don't discriminate. Elise Conlin got a divorce, which tarnished her reputation and disqual disqualified her from ministry, according to the Bible, so she was properly fired by university. But she claims that other men who got divorces were not always fired, so she filed a lawsuit. And what was the result? Of course, she lost. The courts have traditionally recognized the rights of Christian ministers to hire and fire employees for religious reasons, especially ministerial employees using faith-based principles like the Bible. If now, federal anti-discrimination laws were applied to the hiring, firing, and firing of ministerial employees, for example, pastors or religious teachers, and then no church or ministry would be able to safeguard the integrity of its religious messages. In other words, if you can't fire a pastor for violating the Bible, then you can't believe the Bible. And the church can't protect the integrity of its message in the Bible. In an opinion issued, the federal court dismissed this woman's claim saying her, that the First Amendment actually protects the organization's right to fire her when she violates the Bible. Here's a quote from Judge Gordon Quist, who explained, allowing a ministerial employee to pursue employment claims against her supervisor would allow the state to become involved in the strictly ecclesiastic decision of who shall minister to a faithful and to impose upon a religious group an unwanted minister. The very concerns that underlie the ministerial exception. The free exercise clause provides the freedom of Christian employers to apply their faith. While the establishment clause bars the government from getting entangled in religious decision making. Thank God for that wise decision by that judge. Here's what the Bible says, and I don't know why this woman, I, maybe she was a Christian, but why is she suing other Christians in a secular court? The Bible says you shouldn't know how to do that either. First Corinthians six, I'm reading, when one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, the saints, are you incompetent to try trivial cases within your own church jurisdiction? Do you not know that we're here to ju judge angels? How much more then matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such lawsuit cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? Don't put them before secular judges, I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between the brothers? To have lawsuits at all, one Christian suing another Christian is already a defeat for you. Shouldn't you rather suffer wrong? 
Why not rather just be defrauded and let it go? Let's pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, I do pray in Jesus' name. And I thank you for this victory, for religious liberty, that the government is gonna stay out of church business. Let the churches and the pastors hire and fire according to the biblical criteria. And Father, I pray for this woman who suffered this feeling of injustice, that she will receive healing in some other way without having to sue the church in a secular court. Father, give us this freedom and establish religious liberty, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break and we'll conclude the show. This is PIJN News. Do you care about defending the Second Amendment? Are the Democrats trying to seize your guns? Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein actually believes that stickers on windows and gun-free zones are gonna make your life safer? That's really not true. Uh, we also know that Congresswoman Dianne DeGette has confused magazines with bullets and is trying to ban both of those with these stricter gun control laws. But the Colorado sheriffs believe this is unconstitutional. And, and not only that, it's unsafe. A recent Harvard study shows that more guns actually results in less murders and less violence. And look what happened in England. Violence there soared after they banned guns, but here in America, violence dropped by 30% with more gun buying. Why, why is the government the only ones allowed to have billions of rounds of ammunition? I think we should defend your constitutional rights. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Thank you again for watching and supporting us. I want you to take action today. Here's the number again of the Air Force Academy Superintendent, three-star General Michelle Johnson, 719-333-7731. Call her during daytime hours and say, Jesus and the Bible are not illegal speech for cadets. Stop cowering to the anti-Jesus complainers. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 9, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Please donate today, if you can, at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his PhD in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.